Welcome to the South African Civil Society Information Service. I'm Fazila Farouk in Johannesburg. The, the killing of more than 34 miners in Marikana last month has thrown into sharp relief the injustice of poverty and inequality in South Africa. Perhaps most damning in the aftermath of the Marikana massacre is the role of trade unions in all this. It's become clear for all to see that unions are out of touch with their members and most definitely no longer serving the interests of the poorest workers in our society. The strike at Lonman Mine, which sparked the Marikana massacre, has now spread to other mines in the region. These strikes, unfortunately, are being met with extreme state repression. Our government just this weekend has deployed the army in the region and apart from the violence that's been meted out on these workers and the communities in which they live, the effect of the soldiers being deployed in this region is that the workers can't actually meet to talk about the negotiations, the wage negotiations that ought to be taking place. Against this backdrop, South Africa's biggest trade union federation, Kusatu, is holding an elective congress this week. Here with us in the studio today to talk about the future of Kasatu in particular, but also about the future of trade un unions in general, is Ihsan Schroeder. Welcome to Saxis, Ihsan. Hi. Can you tell us um, about what role um, trade unions have played that has, that has led to the situation? And particularly as Kasatu is meeting this week uh, for its elective congress, what has the impact of Marikana been on this big trade union federation? The unions have been in a state of decline for quite a long time now, um, and Kasatu specifically. There are a lot of reasons for that decline. It's expressed itself in a whole range of different ways. But what I think Marikana has done is to just make this an issue for public discussion in a way that we didn't have before. What we've had up till now is the kind of, you know, the workers responding in these unions in a whole variety of ways as a result of the decline of these unions. So things like workers taking, you know, membership of the Scorpions or legal wise because they've lost confidence in the ability of these unions to defend them. Um, just a large efflux from these unions. If you look at Kusatu's report, the Secretariat's report to the Congress today, for example, when they talk about the loss of membership, it's not primarily because of retrenchments, which you would expect, given the fact that we've lost over a million jobs between 2008 and now. The single biggest reason for a loss of membership is workers resigning from the Federation's affiliates. So what happened before Marikana is workers were mediating this situation where the unions were really collapsing. And it's as strong as that, that these unions are largely dysfunctional. <clears throat> I think what Marikana has done is just to make this now such a large national issue that alongside the debate of how, you know, not even a debate, but the kind of acknowledgement that the ANC has become the party of the rich is an equally public acknowledgement that the Federation is in a state of terminal decline. That, in fact, if you take the NUMA specifically, the NUMA is a sweetheart union, very much in the mold of the old taxa unions. And I think that's been the, the one, one sort of major outcome of Marikana, is just to highlight the extent to which these unions are dysfunctional. They have become effectively weapons in the hands of the bosses. And I think it's that that spurred the Marikana workers to take their struggle into their own hands. And there's been a lot of the sense that somehow this is, you know, the, the way that Kasatu and the press have reported this, the struggle in, in, in Marikana of the mine workers for effectively a living wage, is that it's inter-union rivalry. And they have to explain how it is that the workers have shunned both Num and Amku, and the workers have sat in these negotiations now with, with Lonman as a workers' committee rather than sitting there as UMKU workers or as NUM workers or any other union for that matter. And the workers have been quite explicit. They want nothing to do with these unions. And that doesn't surprise me. I think these unions are, firstly, they have become dysfunctional. And secondly, there are other larger developments that have taken place over the last 20 years that have rendered this way of organizing completely irrelevant. So it's not just the unions. 
It's also the forms of bargaining, like the centralized bargaining, the bargaining councils. These things have become weapons in the hands of the bosses. And it doesn't surprise me that the lawnmen, the, the, the mining bosses, are now calling for centralized bargaining because they see that as a way of disciplining the workers. Whereas historically, the bosses have always been opposed to centralized bargaining. And I think it just, that's just one example of how this entire industrial relations framework has grown completely moribund and works only for the bosses rather than for the workers. And Marikana is an expression of workers for the first time very clearly stepping over the limits of the, that kind of industrial relations framework. The fact that they're negotiating on their own without union involvement, the fact that they're forcing the bosses to break a two-year agreement that Numit signed, the fact that the composition of the committee, five of the nine committee members are not even Lonman employees. They're representative of the labor brokers working for Lonman. And this is a, a significant development, that workers are building unity across these permanent labor broker divides that Kusati so jealously guards and, and, and entrenches by refusing to organize the labor broker workers. So I think that's the significance for me of Marikana. I think it's, it's so significant that, you know, earlier senses that the Federation is going to, to disappear, I would go so far as to say this is probably the last Kusati Congress that we're witnessing. We're not going to see another one. Um, the Federation has now shifted its Congresses to every five years. I can't see the Federation lasting another five years because one of the further effects of Marikana is going to be the confidence it gives to other workers to step over their, their traditional organizations, to step over the limitations of the institutions through which they try to bargain for these workers, the institutions through which they try and mediate dismissals and other conflicts. I think it's going to embolden other workers to do likewise, both inside the Federation, you know, the affiliates of the Federation, as well as workers in other unions, uh, whether it's FEDUSA, whether it's NACTU, whether it's Independence. So I really think that um, this is the last Congress we're going to see. If we do see another one, definitely what is incontrovertible is that the number of affiliates that currently sit at the Congress today, probably half of them won't be there. Now, against this backdrop, Kasatu seems to have realized in the aftermath of Americana that the Federation does have problems. And one of the things which the, the press is reporting is that this uh, Congress is going to discuss a minimum wage of 4,500 rand um, across the board, I guess. Um, can you tell me if you think that they will come out of the Congress with a statement like that, with a resolution like that? And what, what do you think the broader implications of that would be? Yeah. Look, I think this issue of a, a living wage, a minimum wage, firstly, let me say, I think that would be, I support the idea of a national minimum wage. Um, I think Kasatu suddenly coming out with a demand for a minimum wage of 4,500 rand is just a rear guard action. I don't think Kasatu is serious about it, firstly. So I don't think it's going to go anywhere. I don't think we're going to see Kasatu now suddenly campaigning around the issue of a national minimum wage. If it does campaign around it, it will be in this kind of political stunt fashion that it will be, you know, flavor of the month for a couple of months and then it will drop the campaign, which is its history, and it will go nowhere. There's a question of how it's arrived at this figure of 4,500 rand. You know, it's a, it was a bizarre thing where the general secretary says, you know, that, you know, yeah, the mine workers, this demand of 12,500 rand, they deserve three or four times more than that. And therefore, Kusat is calling for a national minimum wage of 4,500 rand. Where the logic of that is, I, I don't understand. But there's an important political question. I mean, how do you arrive at a figure of 4,500 rand? Who decided this figure? Historically, the Kusatu living wage campaigns that we've seen in the, you know, in the late 80s, the mid to the late 80s, they were informed by workers framing a demand of what the living wage should be. This is just a figure that's popped out of nowhere. I don't know if this is based within the actual struggles of workers, the demands of workers. And that confirms for me it's just a rear guard action, a kind of face-saving measure. But it's not serious. It's not going to go anywhere. And the reason for this, partly for the reason of the decline of Kasatu, why there won't be a consistent struggle around the demand for 4,500 rand, is that Kasatu has become a middle-class organization. The majority of its members are middle class people and it reflects in the politics of the federation. And we mustn't have illusions that this is still, you know, a fighting force for the working class. It's a middle class institution. But there seems to be a recognition of that problem. 
and going into this Congress, do you not think that, you know, there might be a sea change in the organization given this acknowledgement? Do you not think that there are forces within the Federation that could shift it towards addressing these challenges and responding to the needs of the working class in general? Do you not think that that, would, that could possibly happen and bolster the organization and move it forward? I don't think so. It would be great if that were to happen. I don't think, I can't see it happening. The, the, the problems of the Federation are really systemic. You have, you know, a, 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 firstly there's the social base, there's the, the tether to the alliance. At a time even when, you know, the working class as a whole has begun, begun to understand very acutely the class character of the ANC, that this is a party of big business. And again, that's what Marikana has done very brutally. You know, and all the songs and all the slogans around Marikana of the mine workers is that the ANC is the party of the rich. That's come out very clearly. Kasatu continues with this, you know, this line that we must swell the ranks of the ANC, this myth that it peddles. But I think the, you know, this question of the, 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 the state of, of corruption in, within, the, within Kasatu, there's the investment companies, the business unionism of Kasatu. There are far too many people with vested interests in what they can get out of being in the union these days. They, 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 you know, there's the, the provident funds and the corruption that comes from that. A lot of the rejection of NUM is your shaft stewards, your shop stewards. And the location they have, you know, to be able to make agreements with uh, funeral schemes and insurance companies and, and the benefits they derive from that, sitting on these seaters and the thousands of rands they get paid for going to these meetings, as representatives of unions in union time, in, in, in workplace time, in time that is negotiated by the union, work time that's negotiated by the union. So, the problems of the Federation run very, very deep. It's not a question of just the leadership that's corrupt or that is sold out to the ANC. It runs right down to the factory floor, this level of corruption in these, in these, in these affiliates. And that, there's a material stake people have in maintaining the status quo. You know. So I can't see the sea change happening. The sea change, I think, is going to come in the way that the Marikana workers have done. It's outside the unions and outside the federation. That is, I think, where the sea change is going to come from. And I can, I can, we can sit here and I can, you know, without being there at, at the Congress, I can tell you what it's going to look like this morning. There'll be all the banners, the ANC banners, even though the working class is increasingly clear of what the ANC represents. There'll be the Communist Party banners. You know. The Communist Party is not even Stalinist these days. It's just a vulgar, liberal, bourgeois party. That's really all that it is, you know. And there'll be Jacob Zuma speaking, there'll be Bladen Zimandi speaking, and it'll be business as usual. And what they're going to do, the way they'll deal with Marikana, is the way that we've seen. You know, that it'll be blamed on the splinter unions, it'll be blamed on Julius Malema. Kasatu till now hasn't even come out clearly to say it su supports the demand of the workers for 12,500 rand. Until now, Kasatu hasn't come out clearly to say that. And this Congress even is not going to do that. It'll be completely business as usual. So I'm far less optimistic, which is why I can say to you, I think this is the last Kasatu Congress. I just want to go back to Americana and ask you, what do you think are the chances of this new wave of strikes succeeding and achieving something given the heavy state repression that we see? Look, the state has declared, a, we effectively have a state of emergency in, 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 in Rustenburg at the moment, where the the newspapers want to acknowledge that, whether the state wants to acknowledge that, that's effectively what we have. On top of that, I think you have Anglo-Platinum that's really declared a boss's strike. And the bosses have shut down their minds now. And I think they've really given the, the ANC government no choice of how to deal with this issue. What's the rationale behind that? Well, I think they, 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 you know, the, the bosses, the mining bosses, are saying to the ANC government, look, we've had enough of you pussyfooting around, you know. We've had enough of you blaming Malema and blaming everyone else. You've got to deal with this thing. And it's essential for them to have the Marikana strike smashed, precisely because of its, what it's done. It spurred all the other mine workers into, into taking this kind of action. There was an interesting article this morning in the paper where the transport union is saying they think that it's now affecting the transport workers. You know, that 
There's been this kind of emboldening of other workers. And I think this is a, a real threat to the ruling class in this country. You know that workers are now taking this, uh, workers are being encouraged by the Marikana workers, and this is going to become a generalized phenomenon. That workers everywhere are going to now start demanding, and that 12.5 will become the kind of figure. You know, that's going to become the kind of de facto you know, minimum wage that workers are going to demand. Um, so I think it was important for the, for the mine bosses that this, this struggle at Marikana be smashed. Largely because of its symbolic value, you know, that this is now serving as a spur to all other, to all other workers. And I think that's what we're going to see. I mean, you made the point in your introduction to this discussion that um, the workers can't even meet today. You know, that the workers were made a counter offer by the London bosses, which now sits, I think, at 1800 Rand or something like that. The workers had undertaken to discuss this over the weekend, and there was supposed to be a meeting today. Now, the workers can't even meet to discuss whether, you know, they're going to accept this offer. Now, on the surface of things, it seems crazy. Why is the state doing this at the point when it seems like the London bosses and the London workers are, are finding common ground? And I think the reason behind it is precisely this thing, that they have to break the strike. Because its, it's symbolism has now extended way beyond Marikana. It's no longer a Marikana issue. What uh, would you say then about Marikana being a turning point for South Africa in general? I mean, that's certainly the way it's being reported and analysed by a wide range of people across the political spectrum. Yeah. Look, I think that, you know, the, the important question for the progressive forces, for the left, is this question. Is Marikana a 1973, you know, in, in the kind of context of South Africa's is political development. Is this going to lead to a whole new wave of struggles? Is this going to lead to new formations? Which I think is the critical question. You know, for the left, for the progressive forces, for anyone interested in social justice, that is the key question. Is this going to lead to the emergence of a new movement? The signs are good that Marikana might well represent a turning point because I think it's, it's been common cause that the working class has been on the retreat for quite some time now. Um, which has led to a situation where South Africa is now the most unequal society in the world. And, uh, of course, what's fueled some of that is precisely the kind of decline of Kasatu and the fact that it's become a sweetheart federation and how Kasatu has facilitated that attack on the working class and the loss of a million jobs and, uh, you know, the kind of proliferation of labour broking and casual work and, and so on. So hopefully, yes, hopefully Marikana will represent a lot more than just the immediate struggle of those workers in, 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 in Marikana. And uh, that would certainly be our hope. And hopefully when we next talk in, you know, the next Congress will be a Congress of something new, whether it's a union or some other new form, it's hard to predict. Because again, that was, I think, important about Marikana is the close association between the community and the workers. You know, and maybe that holds some lessons for where we need to go with new forms of organisation. Ikshan, thank you very much for joining us at Saxis. Sure. Thanks. And thank you very much for joining us.